All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be doing a quadraphonic demonstration with the quad linear VCA voltage controlled mixer up here. Um, you can see that I've already got some stuff patched up here, so let me explain a little bit about this, and then we'll get on to the patching, because uh, the setup of this is actually going to take a little bit of time uh, of our last demonstration with the A135-1. Um, so what's going on is I have one, two, three, four outputs coming from the quad VCA, and I've set them up so that um, as they're being recorded, they're going to be panned in certain directions. So Four is going to be on the far right, if you're listening in stereo at home. Uh, three is going to be kind of panned maybe around 1 o'clock. Uh, let's see. Number two is going to be kind of at around 11 o'clock or so, maybe a little bit uh, near 10. Uh, and then the one uh, input is going to be far left uh, in your speaker. So we're going to basically patch four waveforms into this and then get them, get them going with CVs and all that good stuff, and then have a listen to what it can sound like. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and start patching. Down in my A111, I'm going to use the waveforms I did in the last demonstration. So I'm taking the pulse out and going into the number three input. There we go. And you can hear a little bit of signal there. Let me actually bring the gain down on that because I don't want to ruin the surprise at the end. So I'm going to take a triangle out from here and then go up into my four input right there. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the A110 over here to the left of my A111. And I'm gonna use some different waveforms. So I'm gonna take the sine wave from this one and go into input number two. And you can hear that a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that down a little. And I need a little bit longer of a cable here. So I'm gonna take a, let's do a saw wave, and go up to number one, my A135. You can hear that one as well, so I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna get my signal in levels right about the same. And then now I'm gonna start patching my CVs. So now we should start hearing some signals here. I'm gonna actually take the ones that I used the last time. So I think I had a triangle I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this time I'm going to actually go into input number one. So we should start hearing from left to right. So there's our signal over in the far left of our stereo field. And then I'm going to do that little uh, polarizing trick I did last time. So I'm going to take the sine wave out, then go into my input over here. And then I'm going to take my output from here, go over into Input number two. So that kind of gives them a nice little shifting kind of thing going on. And you should kind of hear that primarily in the left speaker and then kind of at around 11 o'clock. So that's two down. Um, for my next CVs, I'm going to go down to the bottom here, to the right, a little further down from my A111. And I'm going to use this A145 as a low frequency oscillator. So I'm going to actually take, let's see, let's take this, this saw wave here. Actually, that looks like a reverse saw. Let's go with that one. So let's do input number three, and this is the one that's around one o'clock. Going a little bit faster, so I'm going to slow that down. Now I'm going to take a sine wave from this to go to my last input, number four. And that should be the one on the far right. So here we have kind of a basic, uh, not quadraphonic necessarily, because quadraphonic they usually imply four speakers, but this is kind of a quad uh, sounding source within the stereo field. It's actually four, uh, four vocal lines, if you will, there. Now, if you expand this to kind of a live setup, you could use this to, for example, send each signal to four different speakers within a room, and then traditionally that's, uh, that's what some composers have done in the past. 
I'm gonna kind of adjust this to go a little bit slower so we have a little more subdued of an effect. I'll bring this down. So you can imagine the kind of possibilities if you have four different signals going to four different places, and then you can kind of adjust your signals at will. It gives you lots of options for variety, and uh, since I am on the A135 uh, demonstration anyway, keep in mind I still have a sum output over here I have not used. So with this, I could actually take it out, put it into an effect, like a BBD delay or thick crusher or even a filter or something like that. Um, but really the possibilities are endless, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be doing in the next one. This was just kind of intended to be a quick demonstration, most, mostly of how to set up something in a quadraphonic type, uh, type way. Um, and I hope that you got a little bit of benefit from this. Um, it's been kind of an interesting series, a little kind of more concise than I'm used to, but I think overall I've learned quite a bit from it, so hopefully you, you took away some useful information from this as well. Um, for the next series, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be doing. Um, I have a couple of things that I might be choosing from. Um, if you have feedback, uh, let me tell you what, what I'm kind of thinking of here. Uh, I was already thinking maybe the A143 complex envelope generator uh, or the A113 subharmonic generator. Um, those two, I think I had one other one, but I think I'd rather hold off on that one for a little while uh, until I learn it a little bit better. So if you have feedback or if you have a preference as to which one should go next, by all means, please post it as a comment on the YouTube channel. Uh, so that's either A143 Complex Envelope LFO or A113. Hope you found this useful and you kind of use this or integrate this into your patches out there. So thank you very much for watching and keep on patching.